Back in issue number one, we started to develop our basic comics vocabulary by color coding a copy of Hugo Hercules to the Rescue once more, written and drawn by William Kerner. However, that was a comic strip, not a comic book. And the title of this series is How to Read a Comic Book. So let's move on to a more complex example. A page from the comic book Fantastic Four, number 52, which was the first appearance of the superhero Black Panther. Fantastic Four number 52 is one of the comics included in the Penguin Classics Marvel Collection Black Panther, which is one of our textbooks for this semester. For this video, though, I'll instead be showing you a stapled floppy copy of the comic uh, instead of that perfect bound book. Uh, this comic book, which was originally published by Marvel back in 1966, was written by Stan Lee and drawn by Jack Kirby. Before we take a look inside, let's revisit our basic comics terminology. Looking at a comic book like Fantastic Four number 52, or later this semester at a graphic novel like March book one, allows us to add at least a couple terms to our chart and to clarify the difference between two terms that we talked about back in issue number one. First, Let's add the terms comic book and graphic novel near the top of our chart. No need to worry yet about the distinction between these two terms. So a comic book or graphic novel is composed of multiple pages, which are read from front to back. That simply means that we would start reading this comic book by opening the front cover then turning the pages until we reach the back cover. Typically, each page is composed of multiple panels, which is a term we talked about back in issue number one. The only exception to that in Fantastic Four number 52 is the first page, which is composed of only one panel. Uh, this is most often referred to as a splash page. But the remaining 19 pages in this comic book are all composed of multiple panels. For our example, I've selected page 18. So uh, on this copy of it, First, I'm using a brown marker to outline the one page we see here. Second, I'm using a purple marker to outline the six panels we see on it. And third, I'm using a green marker to highlight the gutters, the spaces between those six panels. which again is a term we talked about back in issue number one. As a reminder, the panels are read from left to right and from top to bottom. So now I'm using my purple marker to draw arrows that show that reading order. First, 
I would read the two panels in this top tier, starting with the panel on the left and moving to the panel on the right. Second, I would move from the top toward the bottom. That means I would next read the panel on the left side of this middle tier, then move my eyes toward the panel on the right side of it. Third, I would make one more move from the top toward the bottom. That means I would next read the panel on the left side of this bottom tier. And then move my eyes to the panel on the right side of it. Finally, I'm going to go back and use my purple marker to label the panels in order as one, two, three, four, five, and six. Another reminder, a typical panel is composed of a combination of words and pictures. The three categories of words we discussed back in issue one were dialogue, thought, and narration. But in Hugo Hercules to the Rescue Once More, the distinction between the categories of thought and narration was unclear. And that isn't a criticism of Kerner. It's just that he and his fellow cartoonists back in 1902 were still inventing the medium of comics. By the time that Lee and Kirby collaborated to create Fantastic Four number 52 in 1966, writers and artists had had more than 60 years to refine the conventions of comics. So, in the six panels of page 18, the distinctions between our three categories of words are much clearer. Dialogue still tends to be enclosed in circular balloons with tails leading toward the mouths of the characters speaking the words inside them. So, in the first panel of this page, I'm using a dark blue pen to highlight one of the dialogue balloons in its tail. which leads back to the character of T'Challa, also known as the Black Panther. Now, one of the conventions that developed in between Hugo Hercules and the Fantastic Four is that to differentiate them from dialogue, thoughts now tend to be enclosed in cloud-shaped balloons with a trail of little circles leading toward the minds of the characters thinking the words inside them. So, in the second panel on this page, I'm using a light blue pen to highlight the thought balloon, and its tail, uh, which leads back to the character of Reed Richards, also known as Mr. Fantastic. Another convention in comics that developed between Hugo Hercules and the Fantastic Four is that narration now tends to be enclosed in boxes. So in this sixth panel of this page, I'm using a different light blue pen to highlight the narration box. So uh, those are our examples of our three categories of words on page 18 of the comic book Fantastic Four number 52. Now, because I'm an English professor, as well as a writer, you may notice that I tend to look at the words in the panels first, but it's important to remember that the pictures in the panel are just as important as the words, if not more important. Remember that back in issue number one, we talked about how the pictures in each panel can typically be separated into at least two layers, the foreground and the background. As an example, let's take a closer look at the second panel, on page 18. First, I'm using a darker red pen to color what Kirby draws in the foreground. So here we see the gloved hand of the Black Panther pushing a button on a control panel. And we also see a fourth category of words here, a sound effect, click. Um, but let's save that category for a different video. 
Notice how these tend to be drawn bigger, so they appear to be closer to the reader. Second, I'm using a lighter pink pen to color what Kirby draws in the background. So here we see Mr. Fantastic, as well as some machinery, uh, what fans of this particular artist sometimes call Kirby Tech. Uh, notice how these are drawn smaller, so they appear to be farther from the reader. Now, when you write descriptions of panels in a comic book, which you will need to do in your essay, you'll want to use this basic comics terminology. So, uh, we've now reviewed the terms panel, gutter, dialogue, thought, narration, foreground, and background, uh, as well as comic strip. And we've added the terms comic book, graphic novel, and page. Uh, along the way, I've introduced three additional terms. You could certainly try out two, splash page, tier, and sound effect. For a nice example of an essay in which the writer uses some of the same basic comics terminology to describe the words and pictures in a panel, let's read Superman and Me by Sherman Alexi. We'll find that description in the fourth paragraph of Alexi's essay, the one that begins with the words, at the same time, I was seeing the world in paragraphs. Uh, a little later, we'll each describe a panel from either Fantastic Four number 52 or Fantastic Four number 53 that provides evidence that the character of the Black Panther possesses one of the four elements of the Mission Powers Identity, or MPI framework, that Peter Coogan proposed in his article, The Definition of the Superhero. Coogan's definition is the framework of analysis in the academic field of comic studies that we will work with in your essay.